but she's, she, you know, she's going through some things now, but she's um, a great friend. And I thought maybe you might've heard her because she performs all over Detroit. But um, today on the show, we're going to talk about you and your journey to Mr. Continental. Okay. Now, have you entered Mr. Continental before? Yes, this was actually my fifth attempt at the crown. Oh. And I apologize, my eyes are watering and I don't know why, but <laughs> we'll work through it. But yes, this was my fifth time. Um, it was something that I definitely wanted. And I would, you know, the first two times I placed sixth and I stepped away, did some studying, some reflection, came back another two times and placed first alternate took another bit of time away to um, gain some more insight on what it was going to take. And then I came back full force and here we are. Okay. Now, the first, what was the weakness that you saw that you had? What was the one weakness that you had that you saw that kept you from winning the pageant the last few times? Good question. So, it was me seeing myself in my fullness that kept me away from obtaining it those other times. I was there physically, but I wasn't present anywhere else. And that was delaying um, my time, not to take that away from anyone else uh, because it was their time. But for me, I had not fully set in myself and my greatness and then present that on stage um it's something that I had to learn over time and everyone would say it I wish I could see what you uh, I wish you could see what I see or we wish you could see what we see and I, I just wasn't seeing it and then I finally stood in front of that mirror and said hey I see it now put it put well, it forward well you know sometimes our ego or coming from different communities, they've hyped you up so much to say this and that, and they haven't really experienced the pageantry in its full um, over years, because sometimes it takes a few years to learn Continental and understand how the system works and what they're looking for. Agreed. Now, and, a, and a lot of people in these small towns, such as Detroit, it's a big city, but yet it's a small community. Um, and they might not understand the system the way you would understand it after being there five or six times. Yes. Um, and um, so now with that being said, let's talk about something. I want to talk about this rumor here first. Um, last year, I interviewed Travis. Okay. Travis, Mr. Continental. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a rumor that he was straight. Did you hear that? I did hear of the rumor, yes. Okay, and now when you heard this, what were your thoughts about this? Um, my thoughts about it were, one, it was none of my business, uh, what his sexual preference was. When it comes to competing, we all have talent. We are all competitors. Talent is talent. We're going to put it on the stage. Um, there was, to be quite honest, um, there was no say or anything of that nature of who could actually compete for Mr. Continental. As, you know, some pageantry systems has there, you know, some say, hey, you have to be this in order to compete. Mm -hmm. And then there are some that leave it wide open for anyone to jump in. And this happened to be one of those times where you know, as someone who says or identifies as straight or bisexual or otherwise uh, slid in there because it's not something that's really asked. So it was one of those moments where, hey, he's a male competitor competing for a male competition. Mm -hmm. Now, with that being said, um, I, Travis explained to me that he really, he just thought of himself as a competitor, like you just said. Um, he just thought of himself as a competitor in the competition. But now I'm sure when he came to your preliminary, I'm sure that was the talk of the town. Uh, no, not really. I think that when he came to the preliminary, it was more so 
you know, as with any Mr. Continentals or any title holders, what is this title holder going to do or what they're going to present? You know, I think that for a while that it ran its course, mm -hmm. you know, of his identity because there were so many other things that were going on, but that just kind of ran its course. Okay, now I want to talk about one. We'll, we'll leave it. We'll leave it there for now. Um, we'll pick up down the road. Um, let's talk about another controversy. Um, something that we just happened to hear here. Okay. <laughs> we 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 ask you about it. Okay. Now, what happened this year for the opening performance of Mr. Continental? Oh, so oh, his um. His opening that addressed all the things that happened through the year for him or came across to him. Um, hey, when people do their opening, it is, I feel that it is their, it's their way to speak to their, their reign. And as we all know, as you said um, earlier, that there was this rumor or surrounding his sexuality or his uh sexual identity. And he finally had his moment to speak to it. Now, personally, it is something that I would not have done or I would not have touched. That would have been more of a conversation piece um, because honestly, I felt as though as creative as it was and as uh, visually amazing as it was, there was a lot of content that not only uh, was honestly a, a a slight to the system, but also to the supporters and patrons, because you have to be mindful that, you know, at one point in time, these individuals were supportive of you. And you are always going to have those who are against you or who don't agree with you. But that doesn't, you know, that doesn't go across the full spectrum of people. And I felt like it was just, you know, a slap in the face to some, but I also feel that it was his way of expressing how he felt from his reign. Okay, great. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about you, Savans Sinatra Sanchez. Now, where did you get Sinatra from? Uh -huh. So I am a huge fan of the Rat Pack and uh, Dean Martin and uh, Frank Sinatra are two of my favorite, and Sammy Davis, uh, of course, are uh, three of my favorites. And so I just love his voice. I loved his charm. I loved his wit. I love his charisma. And it was just one of those things. I was like, hey, how do I take my name and associate it with music, but a name that others would also uh, know, and it would just have a ring to it? You know, uh, my whole name, uh,